Good afternoon. This is Andrew Sheets with the Third Heaven Traveler. The Third Heaven Traveler is a blog about our spiritual life in Jesus Christ and Him in us who believe on Him and how we apply this existence to our daily lives in this world. The Gospel is found in 1 Corinthians chapter 15 verses 1 through 4, King James Bible. We are saved if we believe Christ died for our sins according to the scriptures, that he was buried, and that he rose again the third day according to the scriptures. Amen. Dear Lord, I pray that this work be submitted for your glory. May eyes be opened, <clears throat> the very few out there, Lord, that will come out of the church of Laodicea and into your marvelous light, Lord, I pray. Even so, come, Lord Jesus, amen, Maranatha. <clears throat> the title of this study is an essential study on the perverse nature of the Zionists, the Judaizers. People, they are alive and well. They are amongst us. Now, it's no coincidence. It's of no surprise to the Church of Philadelphia. Not the Church of Laodicea, the lost, confounded Church of Apostasy of this age. That we have, not once, but twice, in the book of Revelation, the Jews who say they're Jews but are not, but of the synagogue of Satan, are mentioned. The first one, Revelation 2.9, I know thy works, this is Jesus Christ speaking, and tribulation and poverty, but thou art rich. And I know the blasphemy of them, which say they are Jews and are not, but are the synagogue of Satan. This was written to Smyrna. We'll talk about this here a little bit. And to the church of Philadelphia, it is written, Behold, I will make them of the synagogue of Satan, which say they are Jews and are not, but do lie. Behold, I will make them to come and worship before thy feet, and to know that I have loved thee. Now, I believe, well, we know that Revelation 3.9 is written to the Church of Philadelphia. We're suffering the same way Smyrna did, people, by these Judaizers, these Zionists. And these will come and worship before our feet. I believe this will happen at the great white throne judgment before they're condemned, the ones that don't come out. These Zionists who are destroying and attacking the body of Christ, the church. Now, the hyper-dispensationalists who tried to remove the book of Revelation for the church and its, applicable to the, its applicability to the church, they're all part of this. So are the New Apostolic Reformation who say, oh, don't worry about all that. We've got to build God's kingdom now. And they're connected with the Zionists, the evangelical Zionists, who embrace and slobber and hug on national Israel as God's chosen people. And that is not, those are not God's chosen people. God's chosen people will be the Jewish remnant that comes out of those people. There's the, they, they will be only be a third. It's in my studies. Now, I want to make a note here. As I said, Revelation 2.9, it's written to the church of Smyrna. Now, they suffered mightily by the hand of the Jews persecuting the early church. See my studies where I discuss how Polycarp was brutally and treacherously murdered and burned to death by the Jews in an attempt to destroy Christianity. Look at Stephen. Look at Paul. I mean, all over and over again. Paul battled mightily against them. So did Jesus Christ, the Pharisees, the same bloodlines, the same satanic bloodlines people. Now, we know Revelation 3.9, as I said, is written to the current church age of this dispensation. This is the church of Philadelphia. We're the true believers in this age. Now, in this age of apostasy, that church, 
the apostate the the church of apostasy these 501c3 building operations and these YouTube preachers and prophets, these evangelical scholars and Zionists, they're the church of Laodicea, as I said in my studies. Now, the strongest proponents of these big-time names are coming up as your John MacArthur and your Dr. Andy Woods and all of your evangelical Zionists. You know the list is long and strong, like this Jack Hibbs. Um, Greg Laurie goes on and on and on but we also have as a primary spokesman this man is not even a Jew he's Sunni Arab of descent Amir Tesfati his name Amir in Arabic means prince or ruler he was adopted by a Jewish family but he is the strongest one that's raking in the dumbed down evangelical Christians into worshiping national Israel with this Yeshua Yahweh deception and on and on and on but look at my studies now for related study links study the seven churches of Revelation because many do not even know about the seven churches of Revelation what they represent read my study on the oxymoron of Judeo-Christian what it is to be Christian and what it is to be Jewish they're the antithesis of each other people read that study read my study on the tale of two Christians the Church of Philadelphia versus the Church of Laodicea and indeed we are in spiritual warfare and then of course read my Trump make America great evangelical Christian coalition who was all connected with the Jesuit Vatican coalition connected to the Kabbalah third temple Masonic Jewish coalition and the global Luciferian elite they're all on the same side read my study on who is Amir Tisfati I thought this is going back eight years ago that he was a brother in Christ but no he's a ravenous wolf in sheep's clothing now I stated in the title of this study the essential study on the perverse nature of the Zionists and the Judaizers. What does perverse really mean? Perverse is wicked, unnatural, degenerate, contrary, turned away, askew, turned away from what is right. They're malicious, spiteful. And you know what? The word even goes into here and except here, they're, they're wrong. They're not in accord with what is accepted. And this is the standard of doctrine. They've turned away from what is right. Okay? And they're obstinate. They're stubborn and they're wrong. They're reprobates. Now, I want to share, and this is what prompted this video. I want to share, and I urge you to follow Expose the Darkness. I have listed their uh, study and it's uh, exposed the darkness 511 and several times in the last few videos I put their link in here I'll make sure I put it in the description box subscribe to this dear sister in Christ and her deep knowledge of how the Kabbalists work the Messianic Zionist how the Judaizers operate and Zionism it's her study and that is like I haven't seen it's some of the best now I want to share with you what she's written and some of her notes and she shared them with me I asked her and she sent them she said this is a form of messianic Kabbalist now she's referring to I've late recently done and you can go to my YouTube channel you can see the videos I've done on the Yeshua Yahweh deception on exposing Emeritus Fadi and the Zionists and she says this is messianic Kabbalists so no one can take anything at face value because she says I want to share with you there's two videos she wants to share with me and I'll show you these and so she's saying hey be, let me just make a preface here she was concerned and she shared several times and you'll read it where she's like I, I really want to make sure don't watch these videos and think we're recommending them God forbid no see we're not to be ignorant of Satan's devices people but we expose them 
We want to see what the enemy is up to. That's what she's making it clear. Now, if you're a brand new Christian and if you're being overwhelmed, well, my pastor told me that we have it. Israel's God's chosen people, national Israel. No, you're being lied to. They're all sucked into the seduction. It's a very seducive. There is a seducive spirit at work here. That's why Amir Tesfati has this supernatural draw on people. A million something YouTube subscribers, people. Women, mostly foolish women, just fall on him and fawn after him. And some of the hate mail I get from these followers of his. And this is what just, it just totally threw Paul into shock. And he's telling the Galatians, who has bewitched you? When the Judaizers crept into the in Galatia, and the Galatians were just taken captive by them, and that Thessal and Thessalonica, the Judaizers got involved in there, and Paul struggled with them mightily. We're talking to the Ephesians; they were constantly trying to destroy the church. The Jews hate Christ, people. They murdered him. It wasn't the Romans. The Jews did it. I've read it in my studies. All these, the Jews have. And, and and if we and and even me speaking what I'm speaking, you can read it in my studies. Congress, the U.S. Congress, is even has legislation where they want to make even what I'm saying anti-Semitism and to be charged with a crime. That's what they ultimately want to do is to shut us all down. That's why this video will be put on Rumble because I'm. It won't be long. My videos will be struck down. So let's continue here. If you're a new Christian, this may be a lot to swallow, but I know we got to put this out. And so, uh, expose the darkness. Uh, sister, my sister wanted me to warn people about this. Uh, we have to read between the lines. We have to test the spirits carefully. One can understand what is probably happening regarding Trump and perhaps the other Western leaders in high positions. And this explains their visits to the Western Wall very well. Now, let's begin. It says, as a time, we're going back into Roman history, into history back when in Rome, right during and after, I'm sorry, after the time of Christ and after Jesus Christ ascended to heaven and the Acts of the Apostles was beginning, the church was under terrible persecution from the Jews. And about the time when Rome destroyed Jerusalem, so we're looking at 70 AD, the population of Jews in the empire was around 10%. And like in our day, they were extremely influential. America does not even have 10% Jewry yet. Look how they dominate. So one can just imagine what was going on in Rome. The Jewish faith was accepted, respected, and they were not persecuted. Let me make this perfectly clear. The Romans, if you've studied any history of Western civilization, and I have, and if you study the Roman Empire, the entire from the Republic to the Empire, the Romans, we're looking at a period of time about a thousand years. Any time Rome conquered territory, they would allow the conquered peoples to practice their religion. They had to accept certain. They had to accept Roman law. They had to accept and, and allow the Romans to put up statues in their area. But if they wanted to have, and the Jews were given this Herod, who was a of the Herodian bloodline anyway, not even of Aaron in the Levitical priesthood. But they, Herod even built, and uh, well, he added greatly and enhanced the second temple. All right, so let's continue. You can see from these videos, and there's the videos I'm going to point out to you, what they did was they used scripture and especially prophecy to deceive. And so... If this is true, which I think there's a lot of truth to this, they got to Nero, and according to this, Nero converted to Judaism. Now, let me say this. I am not making an emphatic point. 
I am not dogmatic. I want to prove that Nero converted to Judaism. No, I'm saying that there is some very substantial reasons, and is brought up in these videos, that Nero did. And if he didn't convert to Judaism, it's obvious they had a terrible con a sway over his thinking. Now, this would explain his extreme persecutions of Christians, people. He didn't bother the Christians. The Romans didn't bother the Christians. In fact, look at Pilate. He was like, hey, what has this guy done? Read the trial of Jesus Christ before Pontius Pilate. He tried to free Jesus like three times, and the Jews kept saying, no, 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 no. Crucify him. His blood be upon us and our children, upon our heads and our children, right? The Romans didn't, they couldn't kill us. These Christian Jews, they would let them do their thing. As long as they pay their taxes and their support and they're good citizens, we don't care. But, and it says, first they showed him for prophecy that Rome was going to be destroyed for persecuting the Jews. And so he probably converted out of fear. Or I like to look at it this way. If he didn't truly convert, he at least went through the motions, and with a prophecy they were using, and the video brings it up, I've watched both videos, is they're talking, and they show Nero, no doubt the prophecies of Edom, how Edom would be destroyed. And they said, hey, this is you, Rome. Let me also stop and add here. When you study this, and you carefully look at this, you may ask yourself, what does that have to do with us today? <laughs> It has everything to do with us today. The, Jew, the Romans, every single civilization that they conquered, they studied diligently and carefully the culture of the conquered people to understand how they think and operate. It applied to the military. Caesar would study their culture. What's culture? religion, food, customs and habits, and dress, their clothing, their social structure, their how they conducted wedding ceremonies, burial ceremonies, it's all their culture, okay, so, and their language, and their language, right? So, let me give you another perfect example. What happened in the story, in the nativity scene, or let me back up, when the wise men, this massive entourage, this army came, seeking the one, the promise, the Messiah, what did Herod say when he became extremely concerned, when they said they're looking for one, we're following his star? He set his scholars to work. Go study the scriptures. What's being said here? They would be concerned about scriptures of the religion of that culture. Now, put it together. If you're listening to this, and this is like, ah, it goes over your head, please just leave. Turn, Stop the video now and go back to whatever you're doing. For the very few, I'm saying one out of the few that even watch this video, the ones and twos out there, bear with me in this, please. The Romans definitely studied the scriptures, and this would have been the Torah, the Mosaic Law. This would have been what we have in the Old Testament today, right? In the books of Moses. They would have studied this. They would have asked questions about the scripts, and the, and the manuscripts, and the writings of the prophets. They would have known. So, that's why I want to clarify this. So, Nero would have been, would have heard all about it. Now, when they showed him that Rome would be destroyed, right, by the Jew, because of the Jewish temple, I think this would have affected him greatly. And according to the videos, Nero literally became a traitor to his own people. Now, if you know anything about Nero's history, and I do, Nero was thought to be mad, and, and Jose, uh, Josephus... And the other, uh, is it Artithetus, Artitimus, the correction, I'm so sorry, I can't remember the name. There's a Roman, a great Roman scholar who has extensive 
studies on these Roman emperors, and it's very clear that he just went on a tirade. He just murdered his wife and family. He went on a murdering spree. He thought everyone was after him, but he also, they had lost his mind and went into a, a, a insane uh, behavior and then he literally turned on the Christians like you wouldn't believe and this is when the horrible scourge of the church when the Christians had to go underground the Jews weren't involved in this I uh, correction the Jews weren't a part of this the Jews weren't slaughtered in mass he went after who the Christians so Nero took part in a conspiracy to, to deceive the Romans especially Vespasian to deceive him using cunning, subterfuge, bewitchment by false prophecy and trickery. Now, the Jewish progeny to keep his seat in the elite lineage as a deal he made with the leading rabbis. This is what he did with them, right? And this is Jewish descent, meaning the, the progeny is the DNA, the mother's DNA, to pass on who's the true Jew. Now, uh, Sister writes, Exposed Darkness 511 writes, I believe they may have gotten to Trump in a similar way. There's no doubt. I believe, uh, without a doubt, Trump is a secret Jew. And let me continue. In his case, he was a daughter that is a Jew. He has a daughter that's a Jew. Yeah, we all know about Ivanka Trump and Jared Kushner, right? This could also be why Trump did Operation Warp Speed, to defile the temple of the Christians, believing it would bring about the destruction of America. This, of course, this is, of course, because it is written that whoever destroys the temple will, dis will himself be destroyed. In this way, by marrying his daughter off to a prominent Jewish family, he can ensure his lineage continues when things go down. And I bet King Charles and all the others have made similar deals for their seed line or bloodlines to continue if they turn against what the rabbis want destroyed so they can do their Tikkun Almond, which is the rectification of the world. Now, this is all connected ultimately with the Noahide laws. Now, I think the child Nero consults in the second video is not... A literal child but it could mean they deceived him by his childish carnal and extremely literal understanding of the prophecy that needs to be spiritually understood and you'll see it in the second video his own mind was still a child immature spiritually and so he was easily deceived by them especially since he must have trusted them as his spiritual advisors after converting we see the same modus operandi used by false prophets today when the people who trust them, with the people who trust them. But the hidden Kabbalists are a way, way more deceptive. They are way more deceptive and a higher class than those and a whole different class than those we get to see. And this is uh, like your Meritus Vati. This Amir Tisfati is one of them. He is extremely deceptive. And they're in a whole more, and there's this spirit of seduction that's a part of this. People, I need to stop here. How could it be that Paul is just blasting the Galatians? Who bewitched you? You're now, you knew grace. I taught you grace, and you're coming back under the law from these Judaizers? Why did Paul pour his heart out to the church in Thessalonica saying, because they got this letter, someone's telling them, well, you missed the rapture, that's going to happen, you got to get right with this, we have to do this and this and this. Why did Peter get his face ripped off by Paul in Antioch? Because Peter fell to the seduction of the Judaizers. What was the major falling out between Paul and Barnabas? It was over John Mark, and it was about him going and saying, "Ah, eh, the Judaizers are kind of, kind of giving them room. Listen, 
I'm labeled an anti-Semite. I am marginalized. I am shadow banned. Uh, Google shadow banned me. My blogs used to get two, four, five, six, eight hundred page views. Now I get ten, twenty. All right. Uh, I am telling you that when the Congress, U.S. Congress, put that legislation together on anti-Semitism, I'm seeing the handwriting on the wall, people. I just posted something yesterday. Israel controls our political process. Israel, you know, I'm talking the Zionist Israel, and through Mossad, controls our police departments. They also now, through software companies, corporations that are backed by the Zionist government of Netanyahu, they control our 911 grid. Uh, that's a conspiracy theory. You're just fear. Margaret, you're an anti-Semite. Yeah, okay. Let's move on. So, we have no way of knowing if what is claimed here is accurate. All right? It does paint a picture that resembles very much our political situation today. And it does, people. It helps us to understand that our leaders may also be deceived. They are. They're all part of it anyway. And thinking of the continuation of their bloodline. Okay, very good. Now, Kabbalists, as Sister of Exposed Darkness 511 says, Kabbalists are extremely cunning. If the videos are historically accurate, one can see they tricked the Roman elites, and this enabled them to give birth to Rabbanic, to Rabbanic Judaism in order to escape the destruction decreed upon them. And they managed to get their religious seed into the elite bloodline of the Romans through this Rabbi Mir, whom he claims descended from Nero. He seems to imply that this seed lines, uh, these seed lines, uh, they continue to have influence throughout the rabbinic Judaism and the secret societies. And I believe that. If Trump is converted secretly, and I believe he has, they deceived him with similar types of strategies, which will not surprise me. He will be thinking that if he destroys Christianity as it is. Now, of course, Trump gets up there and says, yo, Christian, he loves this King James Bible. This is all deception, people. And, and, and it's all about as an example of the Noahide laws and Noahidism and world peace, as if he's doing God's work. But in reality, what he's doing is the little g, God, which is Lucifer's work. This shows us the subtlety of the serpent. Now, here are the two links right here. Links, you can watch these video links. They're in the description box here. There's two videos. Again, I can't stress this enough. I am not, nor is exposed the darkness. We are not recommending these videos. We're not saying, wow, this is great. We, we, what, we're looking at the enemy here. We're seeing what the enemy's thinking. All right. Enough. Let's move on. Now, yesterday when I did the video, in my link, my case study on the deception of the Yahweh, Yeshua deception of the Zionists and Judaizers, I used that woman as my perfect case study. Now, Expose the Darkness, my sister says, I wanted to write you about this woman. This is all connected, people. To tell you that the line she used and this is what she wrote. A name is a prophetic progeny fashioned into our reality. I knew that was heavy philosophy, but expose the darkness said it. This is typical teaching from what I suspect is the Jewish mystical tradition of the Kabbalah. There you go. Why? Because this woman that was coming against me in my video exposing the Judaizers, She's using their language. She's been seduced by them. She's in a mirror, like, well, them and their kind, they're been seduced by that spirit of deception. The seducing spirits of Emeritus Fadi and their kind. Your Joel Rosenbergs. Your John MacArthur's. Your Ask Dr. Brown. On and on and on. Your Greg Laurie's. Your, uh, and, 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 and the Jack Hibbs. And all those evangelicals. Dr. Andy Woods. <sighs> anyway. The truth of the matter. 
is as you know, we are already in the great apostasy. Amen. And people are being swept away by the easiest and most transparent of delusions. They are not holding fast to the thing which has been taught for 2,000 years, namely works cannot save. But you know what? I want to stop here again. It's just like Paul dealing with the Galatians. Who bewitched you? Why did Paul tell the Thessalonians, the, the Thessalonians at Thessalonica in uh, 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, hey, we're not asleep. Wake up. We see what's going on. Why did Paul tell Timothy, hey, warning, man, we have to re reprove, rebuke, exhort with all long suffering because the time will come when they will not accept sound doctrine. She continues, what I have come to understand is the exact practical way we are being flooded spiritually by the great dragon's lies. Besides, of course, the natural lies via MSM, that's mainstream media, amen. And she writes, uh, Revelation 12, 15, And the serpent cast out of his mouth water as a flood after the woman that he might cause her to be carried away by the flood. At the time of the flood, there was the release of waters from below and waters from above. Now, in the 600th year of Noah's life, in the second month, the 17th day of the month, the same day where the fountains of the great deep broken up and the windows of heaven were opened. Uh, I want to stop right here. I'm doing a study. A separate, I didn't even know I was doing this connection here, but I want to make it clear that the firmament is not was not this massive wall of water. What this is is basically rain like never before poured, poured down while these huge fissures opened in the earth and water poured out of the earth. This is what I was talking about. Now, uh, she continues... This Christian Zionist deception is like the waters from below in the spiritual sense. It is not very difficult to spot, and it isn't, people. It is the basic teachings, but they have also openly started releasing the waters from above, the windows of heaven, which is the mystical hidden teachings of the Zohar, or the mysteries of Babylon. It is, of course, spiritually in the way they see it as the higher truths or waters from above or windows from heaven. And it is not how we as believers see it. We have seen a bit of this above waters in the form of the New Age teaching, but it's nothing compared to what I believe they are now releasing upon the world. And I agree. But now they're going to combine the waters to overwhelm us because they come from the same source, the dragon people. So we are being flooded from below and from above with lies. Those who are not in the ark, who is Christ, are starting to be seriously swapped away. This sense chills people. I urge you, it's just like the ark. Warnings are being called out. She continues here. We may be able to still help those who are walk, waking up and pull them from the waters or the fire, as James put it. But the time is fast ticking away, as you well know. Your exposure of Amir Tisfati may end up being a life buoy for some, and they need to find a place to safety. So you are right not to allow more confusion, but stand very strongly against it and block them when they go on their reprobate rants. Yes, I do. Those who are pulled out from the deception need to find a stable place to relearn the basics and be protected from further lies, not to be exposed to even worse deception. So don't even doubt your instincts one second, even if they come in female form. You do not need to be nice then. The battle is against the spirit in them, the way I see it, not being mean to a woman. Yeah, see, if you haven't watched the video, if you haven't done the, or read my blog, this woman really came out in beginning. I thought, well, she really sees the truth here. But then heavy, heavy leaven. She starts mixing in false teaching. Coming straight out of Judaism. She's at the Yeshua and 
the Yahweh stuff. Okay, so this is what she's talking about. Yeah, it doesn't matter if you're male or female. It's all spiritual. Now, since you're standing strong against this obvious deception and pulling people out, they are eventually increasingly going to come for you because that is what Jezebel did to Naboth when he refused to give his inheritance to be turned into a herb garden, an ecumenical let's just go all get along lie, where people are spiritually unable to handle the meat of the world and seek the herbs of the weaker things like keeping days. See Romans 14. Amen. Now, this is a very sobering, if you read this, this is scary. This is called the Zohar, now available online to all. They're really coming out. And I've literally found that the online Zohar website, you can see they are literally evan uh, evangelizing women with this demonic book as we, as we speak. You can watch the two short videos on the page I linked to see if it speaks volumes. And notice the date. They started on 7 October 2023, the day of the attack of Israel on Israel, which Hamas called al Alask Flood. Uh, correction, Al-Aqsa, the, the Al-Aqsa Flood. That was the October 7th Hamas attack. This global mission to spread Zohar starts on the same day as Israel of the Israel attack called al Aska Flood. One must be blind not to see that this is the more, this is not a mere coincidence that it is the same day. They're not only flooding our countries with invaders, but spiritually flooding the Christian world with the waters proceeding out of the dragon's mouth. And they are no longer just flooding the spiritual world with the introductory Schofield Evangelical Zionist seduction and now the Messianic Zionist Yeshua deception, and let me add the Yahweh. But this above waters as they see it, which is the depths of Satan in reality, is starting to seep into our Christian world and we see it more and more. This woman who commented, is not your run-of-the-mill Christian Zionist. She has been exposed to the mysteries of Babylon in some way, perhaps even Zoric teachings. Yeah, something told me. I'm like, this, uh, you could tell she's not very educated, but she's done some serious research. And she's into, and I pointed this out in the video, definitely the language she's using, it smells like, it smacks of Eastern mysticism, Gnosticism, yeah, it's all there. Yeah. And and this is what my sister exposed the darkness calls out. Amen. And uh what she is speaking of is being used in the uh, uh, uh is what she is speaking of is us being the seed of Christ, but she does not say it in the words we are given in the New Testament. But that of what may be rabbinic the rabbinic oral Torah. Exactly. Amen. She twists everything, right? I do not think you need to examine it all yourself and certainly not explain any of it to those little lambs whose eyes are opening, except if you feel to warn them. Yeah, this is why I'm doing this. I'm warning you. I just say you're doing the right thing to strongly stand against it. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Because if people cannot even stand against the Yeshua, and I'll say Yahweh deception, they're being swept away. They'll have no way to stand against these wicked, hidden philosophies of the rabbis, especially when it comes by way of a friend, yeah, in which the way they plan to distribute the book and use online courses and women's studies. I believe this is the light of Lucifer that Pike spoke of and said it would be brought out in the open, the Zohar. Many Jews are studying this, and they've opened it to their women. But I can tell you it's dangerous lies, and it can open people up to all manner of perversion. Christians must stay away from it. The problem is those in the Christian Zionist movement are going to now be slowly drip-fed this filth. Wow trip fed wow again it will enter via the women into the home as always so i just wanted to explain to you that it may be happening regarding this woman yeah she's absolutely right expose the darkness nails it here you can know 
many will be coming your way. They will twist like the Leviathan serpent between calling sweetly for peace and unity or seeming to ask innocent questions as if they see and if they see you see through it will immediately resort to serpent-like attacks on you as a believer claiming you are someone spiritually unfit for your job. Look at what they did to Naboth. They claimed he blasphemed God and the king in some way. These people do not even know what spirit is in them. Amen. This woman is claiming, even though you know so much, your knowledge is still not exhaustive. That means deep enough. And then, Sister quotes Revelation 2.24, But unto you I say, and unto the rest in Thyatira, that as many as not have this doctrine, and which have not known the depths of Satan as they speak, I will put you in none other, I will put, upon you none other burden it's difficult for me to come to grips with just how deep the deception goes but most believers thankfully need not know all the details as long as they hold fast to the true christ the shepherds just have to keep them focused on the truth as we first received it in faith in christ alone and show them how deceptive the judaizers are they are really snakes. It's almost unbelievable to me. And uh, this is this uh, 7 October 2023. The, the Kabbalah student embarked on a global mission to share the Zohar with as many people as possible. And these are the links I told you about, about Nero. I'm going to close this study here. Even so, come Lord Jesus. Amen. Maranatha.